Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the walk. I want to thank you all for being willing to join in this new format. And um, I'm sorry, it was giving me a message. It's a little bit different now because it's an organization. But anyway, I sent, I was able to send an invite to everybody who was a part of the group. And I'll be watching closely if you could all like this video so that I know that we got everybody. I have a few people that were in the group that I'm not Facebook friends with. So I'm not able to send them a message or anything. And I just wanna make sure that everybody made it over there. I'm also trying to figure out how to figure out who has joined this organization, um, the organization page because it doesn't show you the same way as the group page. So anyway, I'm just trying to make sure that we don't miss anybody that was enjoying the walk. I don't want them to be cut off. The idea was to expand it so more people can see it. So anyway, um, this morning I've, I've, I've kind of struggled a little bit with what to talk about. I had a very vivid dream last night. I do believe that it was a dream from the Holy Spirit and God has made it clear that I'm not to share the details of the dream privately or publicly, but I woke up with an enormous need to pray for Kamala Harris. And I'm asking all of you to really be in prayer for Kamala Harris. Just pray for her, pray for her, pray for her, be relentless about it. Even if you see things that she does that you don't like, keep praying for Kamala Harris because, um, in this dream, it was clear that that prayer is essential and that that prayer is moving mountains and we need to be in prayer for her. Of course, we also need to be in prayer for President Biden. We also need to be in prayer for Donald Trump. You know, we need to be in prayer for our nation's leaders, but I really had an urgency to pray for her after this dream that the Holy Spirit gave me. So anyway, um, today we're starting off in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10, and we're talking about the fact that Jesus Christ goes everywhere with us. Yesterday, we talked about the fact that everywhere you step is holy ground, and we have a lot of scripture to back that up. When I put it in the, the Google, I ended up on Open Bible, one of my favorites, and I had well over 100 verses about the fact that God goes with us, and God goes through our day with us, and he's always there with us. So we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10, and this is what it says. By the, grace of God, by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder and someone else is building on it, but each one should build with care. Okay, so what does that mean? We gotta remember that Paul wrote this book. And Paul is using the grace God has given him to lay a foundation for building the gospel and building the community of believers. Verse 11, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, when we're building a foundation with our relationships, we're building a foundation with people that we're telling others about Christ, it all has to revolve around Jesus Christ. You have to remember, this is not about you. This is not about promoting yourself. This is not about, hey, I got this person saved and I got that person saved. No, you're not the one that got them saved. It was that person in the Holy Spirit. All you did was be a vessel and be that voice and share the gospel with that person. It's not to your credit. It's all to glorify God. Verse 12, if anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to the light. It will be revealed with fire and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. Now you can try to build a gospel through phony measures, but it's all gonna fall apart. The only way you can have a solid rock foundation is when you're building that foundation on Jesus Christ. You're building your life on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Remember, when you entered into that relationship with Christ, you became a new creation. And, if, and spiritually, you completely started over. Keep that foundation, Jesus Christ. Keep that foundation strong by building your relationship with Jesus Christ. Verse 14, if what has been built survives, the builder will receive a ward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved. 
even though only as one escaping through the flames. And then this is the verse that was that came to mind and I didn't even know where it was. I had to look for it that God really wanted me to stress. And it says, verse 16, don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? The Holy Spirit is going everywhere you go. Jesus Christ is going everywhere you go. Every step you take is holy ground and you are there to fulfill a mission and glorify God. Before you do anything, say to yourself, does this glorify God? If the answer is no, then you shouldn't do it. And yeah, sometimes you're gonna get it wrong. I get it wrong. Everybody gets it wrong sometimes. But there's also gonna be a lot of times where you get it right. And because of that, the gospel and the community of believers is gonna grow. Next, we're jumping to Psalm 16, and we're starting in chapter five. And this is just a great way to begin your, your weekend and really bask in God's presence and understand the peace and the joy that comes with following Jesus Christ. So we're in Psalm 16, verse five, and it says, Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. So what does that mean? First of all, the portion and the cup, that's what you survive on. You need water, you need bread to meet your physical needs. To meet your spiritual needs, you need the Lord. And that's what makes your life secure. You have that foundation that we talked about in the previous passage. And your boundaries are in pleasant places. You're always in that delightful inheritance of knowing that you're under God's grace. Verse 7, I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. So sometimes even in your sleep, the Holy Spirit's talking to you and telling you things. It happened to me last night when I had this very vivid dream. And we need to be open to that because it's building our relationship with Christ and we're becoming more Christ-like. Remember that the word Christian itself translates as Christ-like. Does that mean we're exactly like him? No, but it means we're growing to become more and more like him. Verse eight, I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Don't let anyone shake what you know you believe. Don't let anybody, in, let them laugh, let them scoff, but don't let them shake your faith. Don't let them shake what you know to be true. Verse nine, therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let the, your faithful one see decay. So we've got to keep in mind that we are in God's arms. We are resting in his, his arms. We are protected by those powerful, strong arms and we're being loved by those arms verse 11 you make known to me the path of life you will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand so god is showing you the steps that he wants you to take in serving him god is showing you the joy of being in his presence as you go into your prayer closets today bask in that joy of being in his presence let it rejuvenate you, let it bring you rest, let it recharge you so you're ready to tackle this day. Have a wonderful day, God bless, and keep walking the walk.